Sean Ray here for Digital Muscles. Where are they now? I'm sitting here with the 1997 NPC National Overall Champion, Mr. Tom Prince. We are in Long Beach. Big Tom, it's been a hot minute since I've seen you. Uh, and you kind of disappeared off the landscape of bodybuilding. But we're in your hometown of Long Beach at the Legion's Competition. And uh, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Tom, Tom, last time you were on a bodybuilding stage was what year? 2002. 2002. And what was that? Was that the New York Night of Champions? Yes. Yeah, Night of Champions. I got seventh at that one. Who yeah. won that show? Uh, Marcus Rule. That's right. Marcus Rule. Controversially with... Bob, Chick Bob Chickarella. No, Bob Chickarella got second. Wow. The Paul Dillette one was uh, 2000, was two, um, 1999. But didn't Marcus Rule win that one too? Um, so Marcus, won, Marcus won in 2002. Bob got second that year. Yeah, but I think the, the year before Overbrook won. Okay, yeah. That was a little bit controversial with because he shouldn't have beaten me or oh, De Dexter go. Jackson. But I'm not going to get into. Forget me. Like, <laughs> let's go back to the beginning. Hold on a minute. We're, we're, we'll go. So 2002 was the last time you were on a stage, right? Yep. And uh, obviously Ronnie Coleman won that Mr. Olympia that year, and that was the year Jay Cutler sat out the Olympia, I think, for the first time after getting first runner up in 01. Yes. Won exactly. The, he won his first Arnold Classic uh, exactly. that year. Hey, let me cut you off just one second. Yeah. After all, I'm going to tell you a cool story about mm -hmm. you. So after I won the Nationals, the next morning. 97. Uh, 1997, right. Um, I did, I had, we had to do the uh, NPC shoot, right? The overall champs had to do the NPC shoot for yeah. J.M. Mannion. We were in the meet, hotel? Right, meet at the hotel. Um, me and Nicole Bass had to come downstairs and meet with J.M. Mannion. So I was looking for J.M. I pulled up to a table that you were at. And somebody else was at. It might have been JM. Okay. And um, the first thing you said to me when I sat down was like, "Tom, welcome to the club." <laughs> and that was kind of a small thing, but after that, every time I saw somebody that turned pro, I did that to them. Oh, great! And that was one of like small things like you learn from the guys that come before you that you do. I did that to people, and people always thought it was cool, and I did it to them. And so, in, right. a, in my own way, I'm saying, "Hey, you know what? Thank you." That. It was one little thing that meant a lot to me at the time. And what's crazy about that, Tom, is I was 10 years before you in 1987. Right, yeah, yeah, When yeah, I won yeah, that, yeah. but we're only like a year apart. Right, we're three years apart, yeah. Uh, a couple years apart, but let's let's back things up because you did come on like a freaking tornado out of uh, Alabama, man. It was like one of those brick houses, but, but it wasn't easy. Didn't you have a couple of uh, close calls before you actually turned pro in terms of like being second yeah. or third? Yeah, I got second three times. Second to Don Long, second to Craig Titus, second to Jay Cutler. Good company. And then turn, yeah, right, not bad. Well, and then turn pro as so, 97. Yeah, I was I, only at Nationals. My first Nationals was the 95 Nationals, and I won the 97 Nationals. And Yeah, it happened pretty quick. Right, yeah. And uh, how was the money back then? Like, you turned pro, and did it change your life? Where were you living at the time? Um, when, I, when I was an amateur, or, you know, doing Nationals, I was living in Florida. Um, did it change my, I mean, I had a contract with Metrics as an amateur, yeah. which was really cool. Um, you know, not a lot of guys get contract. I mean, guys don't get contracts anymore at all, basically. But mm -hmm. at the time, I had a contract with Metrics. And then after Trump Pro, got a contract with Weeder. And so I had a contract with Weeder for eight years. What brought you to California? Gold Gym? Uh, Trump Pro and really, yeah, to be out here. Did it was do? just easier. I, I just, at the time, so you got to remember, of course, this is pre-internet. Um, it was. I thought it would be easier to make money being out in California. Was it than it would being in Florida? Yeah, I sort of openly tell people what I make because I think it gives guys an idea. Um, you know, because I wasn't getting top five at the at the Olympia or mm -hmm. top. You know, I wasn't in that group of six guys that were always there like you were. Right. Um, but I was as a pro. I made I averaged one hundred and thirty thousand a year for those six years nice. that's no exaggerated for those seven years that's no exaggeration no not adding one dollar to that I and, and I would tell people that yeah. so, I mean one of the best conversations I ever had with somebody um, in 1995 when I first met Chris Cormier you know was getting to ask him like hey what are you making you know overall what are you making from your contract with did he even have an idea because when you sell he, pictures and stuff throughout the year how do you add that up he didn't really have a great overall, yeah. a great idea. <laughs> he did know what his contract was with Weeder. Right. And even though he'd been sixth at the Olympia two years in a row, his contract with Weeder was, I don't think he'd mind me telling this now, but you know, he's making three grand a month. Yeah, he was getting And that really was tough. really like an eye opener. It was like, whoa. <laughs> you gotta negotiate you know, be, be, better. Be prepared to, yeah. right. So when I turned pro, um, one of the things I did, other than have my contract with Weeder, um, you know, wrote articles for Weeder, I wrote, 
I think I wrote 25 articles in the first three years. Yeah, you're right. Um, wrote articles, uh, you know, you had your guest posts and you did picture sales and all that, but I also helped guys get ready for shows. And yeah, you're a prep, prep. Coach. Yeah, I did that for a number of years and, you know, so all together was that 130 grand. So let's let's back up. So, well, you, you were working with Chad Nichols for a while, weren't you? Yeah, oh yeah, the whole time. Um, the year I won nationals, I, I worked with Chad. And How then did... I worked with Chad the whole time I was a pro. Yeah, because he was, he had a lot of people, you, Don Young, Flex Wheeler, uh, Chris, Paul, Chris, Chris, Paul Nasser. He had yep. the entire top dogs and, and if I remember correctly, when you came on the scene, you were you were like the guy with the quadriceps. You were like the, the next coming of Quadzilla. Well, hams too. Uh, yeah. And the hamstrings. Right. Uh, those were like your your trademark. But somewhere along the way, did you win as a pro? You, you ever? Never. The best I did was third at the Night of Champions. That just tells you how deep that '90s lineup was. Right. Um, oh, yeah. The guys were really good back. You know, when I look back at the pictures, I, you know, I think everybody. Too, um, I think everybody loves that their era the best. Yeah. Um, I certainly think. All the guys from the 90s were the best group of guys bodybuilding's ever seen. The early 90s and late 90s. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, all absolutely. The through, all the way through. Tough decade. And Did you think that? Well, yeah, I, I do. Because when you look at the 90s and you, if you're going to put people in the Hall of Fame. Right. I mean, the the entire group well, you of got guys everybody could be there, there right? When, yeah. yeah, when you move into 2000, you're getting a couple more here and there. And then you get to 2010 and you're talking like maybe like Kai Green and Phil Heath maybe and... And now we're here in 2019, and you know Dexter Jackson is like the old holdover. But there's not a lot of guys with Hall of Fame pedigree, even with a lot of victories. Right. Uh, when you look at Brandon Curry, for example, he's won the Arnold Classic, Ohio, Australia, Brazil, the Lou Ferrigno Classic, uh, and he just won the Olympia. Um, right. Pedigree-wise, he could be a guy that's in the Hall of Fame. Right. But now take the guys that that were from the 90s. You got to ask, can he beat? Could he beat any of those? Chris no. Cormier? No, right. Could he beat uh, Vince Taylor? Right. Uh, right. It's, it's a different, it's hard to compare eras. I mean, but you're only as good as the guys you stand next to. And you stood next to some of the best in the world. Right. Uh, it's hard to believe you only had a five-year pro run from 97 right. to 2002. Um, yep. And naturally, you only, you didn't win. I only won two shows, by the way, just to clarify. Um Unceremonious. Oh, that's unbelievable. Isn't I know. It? Everybody, I, yeah, but you were in the top what? You got top yeah. four at the Mr. Olympia like was, yeah. 10 years in a row, 12, 12 years in a row? Yeah, I was trying 12? to be Mr. Olympia. I mean, so how I, cool is that, though? I, mean, yeah, that's... I, I was never in it to win a bunch of shows like Dexter and Vince and those guys. And, and some people want to maybe grade you on how many shows you win. But for me, I was competing against the best every time out. So. Right. Um, but it's about you. So 2002, you have your last show, and then you just kind of disappeared, man. What? Give us the skinny on that. You know that. what? My, my personality is such that I am either all in or all out. Yeah. So, you know, when it I got It looks like into, you're all out, by the way. Yeah, I'm, definitely. I'm sizing I'm all you out. up. I'm, 100 and, I'm, like, I'm like 185 pounds I was right going to ask you. Give us your, your stats. Okay. Yeah. But five, what was, five, what? Right now, I'm 5'7". I think I shrunk it in. <laughs> At your heaviest, what were you? Uh, the heaviest I ever got was 318, 317. Wow, 5'7". Uh, normally, I walked around at like... Um, I was 5'8 back then, though. I definitely shrank yeah. and sense but um do you think you're I walked around like a 305 you think you're healthier being this light by comparison yes okay a lot so healthier feel take, a lot better take us through it because you didn't just walk away from the sport of bodybuilding it kind of consumed you here, uh, here's what happened so when when bodybuilding ended for me i mean i'll give you like the the positive stuff first yeah um you know my wife started a property management company i remember that so we were going to be managing apartments mm -hmm. and you know, it took a little while for it to get going, but um, what started off as just one little single room, like just this table that we're sitting at, would have been the size of my entire office back then. Now I've got, we manage 100 and, I think we've got 172 buildings. We've got 77 employees. Um, we own two apartment buildings. Nice. Um, the business is doing phenomenally well. You know, um, business is based out of Long Beach. How long have you been doing it now? Uh, since... April of 2003, so it's been 16 years. Mm -hmm. So this is the 17th year. But, but do you have the passion for that the way you did bodybuilding, or is it just a natural yes. business progression? Okay, great. No, it's the same. It's the same. Yeah. And they, and they sort of treat it the same way too. Like in other words, I I only go to the gym once a week, but I won't even go that one day a week if I'm a little bit behind. Yeah. You business know, like first. just but like work has to come first, first last, and in the middle. Yeah. You know, I. Can't, by the way, you've been married how long? I've been married for 25 years. Wow, so she was there for all of this stuff. Everything, yep. Uh, take us yep. through the illness and the ailment that contributed to you walking right. away from the game. I have, okay, so what I, well, I mean, what ended up happening was my kidneys 
failed. Um, the reason they died, I know everybody that ever watches this or saw anything about me wanted to say, you know, of course, it's, oh, it's got to be a, a gear related thing. It's a steroid related thing. Like, ultimately what we found out, and I know this because I had a kidney transplant and the kidney transplant died also. What year was the kidney transplant? Kidney transplant was in 2011. Okay. And uh, 2012, I take that back, 2012. And kidney transplant died after two years. I've got a, um, a ge genetic condition, it's a blood condition called SFGS, which stands for, or FSGS, focal segmental glomerical and you sclerosis. Didn't, you didn't figure that out till after the kidney. Right, the problem. doctors didn't know. Right. You know, they have, I mean, they, and unfortunately it's one of those things they can't tell unless, you like, while you've already got a dead kidney, you know, my, my, like if you had biopsied my dead kidneys, it would all look like scar tissue. Okay. But that could have been from a variety of reasons. You don't think bodybuilding was the main reason? They, well, see, I always, like in, like if you, like if you truly ask me, I always say bodybuilding had to have something to do with it, Yeah, you're right? 318 as a yeah. freaking five foot eight bodybuilder. Right, you know, the only thing is though that, was that when I got a kidney transplant, like before the transplant, I was 195, 200 pounds. So you're already down, you were right, done. And, and, you know, without, you know, I hadn't taken any, used any gear in mm -hmm. eight years, seven years at that point. Were you a big diuretic user? That's you the know? question. Did that have anything uh, to do with it? No, I mean, I don't think any more than anybody else, really. So let me take, I'd say average. So let me take, I'm gonna probably put you on the ropes and on the defense because sure. I've had my issues with gurus. Remember, when I was competing in the 90s, Tom, you came late. But uh, when the gurus started coming in and Chad Nichols started snatching up Flex and Paul and Chris and Nasser and yourself and you know, Don Long kind of came a little bit later on, I look back when it was all said and done and literally to a man, with the exception of Paul Dillette, everybody had kidney problems working with Chad Nichols. Um, you find that coincidental? that Flex Wheeler had a kidney transplant, Dong Long had a kidney transplant, you've had a kidney transplant, Nasser Oil Somebody is dead, Don Youngblood is dead. Uh, I mean, if, do I keep going or? You know what, I-, I They all have I, one I, thing I in common. Say, I will only tell you this, Dad, first of all, Chad was one of my best friends, mm -hmm. so in no way would I ever blame him. Any decisions that Is that were, ironic though, that it, all those people are jacked up and they all work with Chad? It's an interesting coincidence. Coincidence, you know, was he doing something that other trainers I, I, weren't doing? You know what? When I talked, when I talked to other guys, I mean, it's. Uh, I think the fans will sit and they think that we all sit down and talk about all the amount, the, yeah. the amounts of gear we were all using. You know, like we had powwows about this. Yeah. But but the but the friends I had that were other pro bodybuilders, the other guys that were good, you know, um, and there's at least a dozen, fifteen of them. That I would talk to about, hey, here's what I'm doing. What are you doing? Everything was the only two people that ever really took a lot more um, were Milos yes. and Craig Titus. And he, and pardon and me, Milos is alive. <laughs> yeah, right. Milos, right. So pardon me, Dallas for, McCarver is not. Right. Yeah. Pardon me for throwing their names in there, but um, you know, I thought Milos and, and Craig were crazy for they the both, amounts yeah. they were using. Absolutely. Um, I didn't think what we were like. So we were using considerably less. Does that mean it's yeah, maybe we're, we're just a, taking less than them. Maybe you're using a different type. Could be. I mean, I, did, I, I mean, like I you, didn't, but I can't like. You can't. There's blame no someone. without without getting right without pooling everybody together. Yeah. And saying, here's what we were all doing. It Is just, there any way to really know? There's a body count, so. but there's a body count and a kidney issue related to one individual. So I'm I'm sticking to just statistically. That doesn't sound right to me uh, mathematically it's not right. I mean, coincidence it's like, i don't know maybe it's the type of stuff you guys were doing but we were myself and kevin lavroni and others like me uh we were battling not just the bodybuilder but we were battling the guru behind the scenes so we were kind of wondering is there a certain chemical that you guys might have been doing besides the anabolics not for, I mean, for with me absolutely not okay so I mean, yeah I can, i'm pretty open i've actually put yeah, online stuff like <laughs> for instance, like what I took getting ready for the Night of Champions in 2001. Right. So uh, I, I'll just tell you, well, testosterone, or yeah, test, seponate, deco, winstrel, and growth hormone. It was a simpler time. That in was the 90s, it. That I was think. it. There yeah. wasn't anything fancy in there. What do you think about all these guys with the growth hormone and the GH and the insulin? And I mean, is it chemical warfare today when you look at it, or do you even pay attention? I think. I think. I think people took and ran with 
the gear as if that's the magical answer. Didn't when back that. in the day, like everything for us was built around the training. training yeah. You like, know, training came, you know, and the gear was something that there's no question it helped. There's no question it worked, but nobody was relying on the gear and, you know, the training, like having the training be an afterthought. I think it was the other way around. Like, you know, we all trained our asses off and yeah, we the had gear a was a little more of an afterthought. Yeah, so we're in Long Beach. That's why you're here at this bodybuilding contest. Do you go to the shows anymore? Because I haven't seen you no. in years. I think so, this is the first show I've been to in five years, and before that, it was five years prior to that. Is it because of life, or you just it doesn't interest you to the degree when you're competing? Um, like I said, my personality is really that I'm either all in or all out, and so. Did you take a sneak peek online? Like when the Olympia results came out, did you like go on Instagram? Yeah, or? you know I do that if I'm still well because you know like somebody. For like somebody like Dexter Jackson, I remember meeting Dexter in 1993 mm -hmm. at the Southern States when he was a middleweight. Yeah. Um, you know, he was from Florida and I was from Florida, even though he's from Northern Florida, I'm from Southern Florida. But so will I, yeah, I still watch this because Dexter's in it. Right. Like not I to, not see to how, hear my commentator. Right. I want to see how my, <laughs> my, how, right, how my friend did. Okay. Um, I know Sean Roden a little bit, not much, but enough to, when Kai was doing it, like I know Kai, I like Kai a lot. I think Kai's great. Um, I knew Phil a little bit, you know, so I, I would keep track of my friends. You think it's different, Tom? Because, like, when you competed, I don't even know, besides Vince Taylor, that there was even someone that was 40 years old in the show. And you rattled off Sean Roden and Kai Green and Dexter Jackson. I mean, these guys are on the backside of 40 years old. Right. So is it that there's a longer longevity for the athlete, or is it that some of the really good guys are just getting out of it? earlier and the ones with persistence are staying in it longer you know I, I think i think you're right i think you know when there's when there's that there's a group of guys that retire and you know and not as many good guys coming up you know somebody like dexter and this isn't 100 percent all respect to dexter right you know but you know he can stay in it till he's 51 years old yeah for, for yeah i don't know if back in the or 50 yeah is he 50 yeah, 51 he's 50 this year I think, he's, I think he's like six months younger than me yeah so he when you know you can only well he can stay in it longer because the group of guys around him aren't as good yeah now, he is that good but back in the day nobody could have stayed in it that long. You know, no, Albert no, Beckles, no. right? Robbie Robinson, Albert Beckles. Yeah, but even that, it was, that was like way before us. Exceptions, right, but I mean, yeah. they're talking like one guy. Yeah, now you we've know? got a whole lineup of guys. Right. Um, so what's happening today? You're in the real estate thing. You're here right. at the contest. How does it feel being at another bodybuilding show after all these years? Um, I think it's fun. You know, it's fun bumping into people. You know, I like, like even bumping into you is cool. Like yeah. I gave you a hug when I, you know, <laughs> you know yeah. cause I hadn't seen you in a decade. Right. Um, you know, it's fun seeing Bob Ciccarello and Will yeah. Harris and you know, some of the guys though, some of the old crew from the Venice schools. I saw Charles Glass too. You know, I like seeing that Charles had some, like a little bit of a health issue. Yeah. You know, know, I like seeing that he's doing real well again. That's great. You know, like I, I don't ever remember being in the Venice schools and not seeing Charles there. Yeah. So are you, you know? doing any online stuff? Do you work with any athletes? No. Do you talk bodybuilding at all? No. So I am completely out of it. If I went in your house, I wouldn't find one of your trophies or a magazine. You, or something. you know what? Even when I was competing, you wouldn't have found a picture mm -hmm. of me. Oh no, you can find a magazine. Okay. I kept them all. I think I've got like over 300 magazines that I was in. How's the, uh, how's the health now that you've had all these things that you've had to overcome? Um, it's good now. Mm -hmm. You know, I still have to go to dialysis, mm -hmm. um, three times a week, but you know what? Because I can, uh, because I can take my laptop with me and work. You work online. You know, yeah, I literally just work sitting at dialysis. So I usually work, it's a, it's a four hour treatment. So I work for the first three hours mm -hmm. and the last hour I'm starting to get just a tiny bit lightheaded. Just close it and sit back, you know, basically relax. Is it a daily thing or is it every other day? Or? Three, three times a week, okay. every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. That, how long will that be for? In, indefinitely? Until the day I die, yep. So there's not like a transplant where you can just get a new one? I mean, I could get another transplant, but knowing that my blood would kill it again, I don't want to go through the transplant. The other thing is, you know, for me to get a transplant means I'm taking it away from somebody else. Or maybe someone's donating, no? You know? Can someone donate? Uh, or is that harder? My harder kids have offered. My wife did wasn't a match. Her sister was not a match. It's a tough one. You, yeah. know, you need to be a genetic match. You need to have the same blood type. Um, my kids offered. I, I refused. Yeah, you know, well, I said no to both my kids, even though they're... My son's 29, my daughter's 27. They're old enough to do it. You gotta be 25 or older. Right. You, but uh, I said no to you, them. You've, so. had a, you've had an interesting run there, Tom. And so when I say things like 
you know, Dexter, Dennis Jackson, Dennis uh, Newman. Dennis Newman. You know, yeah. he won the national USA's and got stricken with leukemia. Um, you've had your kidney issue, and Flex has just recently become an amputee with his leg as it results to his kidney-related thing. By the way, my, my heart goes out to Flex. Flex, love you, bud. Yeah, he's recovering. What would advice would you have for somebody that chooses to be a bodybuilder today and wants to have a career in the industry? What, what just, can you say? You know, the biggest mistake I made, personally, is so I would, of course, you know, you try to... You know, you try to pay it forward a little bit if you can, or at least give people advice on, hey, what would I have changed? Here's what I would have changed um, if I could go back and do it all over again. Um, I didn't start getting regular blood work done until probably the last two or three years that I was a bodybuilder, or that I was a competitive bodybuilder. I would have started doing that, I mean, even if it's just once a year. Go get your blood work done, have all your levels checked. You know, it, it's also real easy to um, rationalize, like, oh, my, li you know, your liver enzymes. If you're if you're using gear, oh, my liver enzymes are a little bit high. But the amount of protein I eat is going to raise my creatinine level, and it's going to show that my creatinine level is a little bit high. Creatinine level is what measures the amount of protein in your blood, so that's an indicator of how well your kidneys are doing. Um, don't rationalize that stuff. Pay attention to it. You know, so that, and if, you, if you're starting to have any issues, even a little bit, you either need to stop or back way off. You know, don't just, you know, you're, everybody think you're not gonna feel your kidneys. If your kidneys are failing, like right up until this, the moment they were dead, I had no idea. Yeah. You know, if you're, if you you're, don't feel anything, you know? That's the thing about having kidney problems. If your kid said, Dad, I wanna be a bodybuilder, are you encouraging never, it? No, I would never let him do it. You discourage it? Yep. Even if he was 18 years old, he's like, you can't stop me. Like, I'm going to do it. You, at some point, you might have to yield. And then what? I, would you teach him the I, ways? I would, I would think I would talk him out of it and just say there's like a smarter way to. Like, if you want to do this as a hobby and you don't want to compete, that's fine. Right. You know, if you want to be competitive and use gear, like, um, we're going to have to go a different way. Not even classic to... physique? Maybe physique? Is it something you, you can... I know it sounds horrible for me to say that right no what I what I yeah if they if they could okay if they could be you know if they could do it natural or almost completely natural I don't know I saw some guys in my time that were natural that looked amazing you know I thought Michael Hearn I still think he looks amazing and he's you still think he's natural he's, he's 50 years old you know what <laughs> the verdict's you know, out you know what? You know what? The thing with Mike is, and I've known Mike, you know, of course, again, forever. I've known him for 30 years now, almost. One thing's about Mike: he never changed. For somebody, if he was taking stuff, you know, usually when guys are taking stuff or they go off, they go up and down. you see the weight fluctuate a little bit. They get a little more bloated, and then they lose a little bit of that water weight when they go off. Even if they don't necessarily drop tons of weight, mm -hmm. but things change. Their skin gets a little bit bad. They start having some side effect of some kind. I never saw that with Mike in any way. Wow, and, and he just had you know? a baby, baby Titan. Yeah, I mean, that's great, you know? All right, man, you so know? if anybody wants to follow you or reach out to you, Tom, as a result of this interview, where do they go? They don't. You're not on Instagram? No. Nope. You're not on Facebook? No, you can't okay. find you on Twitter? No, you can find me on Facebook. It's under Thomas N. Prince. All right. But again, I will have nothing to do with anything bodybuilding. So, so. If, I, if I ask the bodybuilding question, I'm not getting a response. But if I want to get an apartment or a condo or something like that? Uh, Yes, thank you for that. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, Tom Prince for Where Are They Now? Thanks, Sean.